Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Suzerain. So, uh, we haven't really made any decisions that actually matter uh, so far. Generally our decisions have just kind of been a are we going to stick to our campaign promises, yes or no? And then a few other minor things. Um, I don't think we read the newspapers at the end of the last part because it was probably going to need to read them again anyway because the game is running in Iron Man mode, which is a default mode. You can't get out of Iron Man mode until you've... Um, until you've uh, beat the full game once, which I have not done, so yeah. Uh, so I can't just sort of save whenever I want, so it makes an auto save at the start of every turn. Um, and you're just kind of stuck dealing with that is probably the best well maybe not the best but that is the simplest way to describe it so that's sort of what we're relying on for loading so we have a fire that struck Hull sword state university archive uh it was put out by local firefighters after burning for eight hours and ravaging through the historic library which housed many priceless documents reporters on the scene have relayed that the event occurred in the evening with multiple staff of the faculty being transported to the hospital with severe burns but no deaths occurred well that's always good to hear uh, the rector, Sander uh, Navek, immediately commented that the incident was has damaged several academic works and employee records. We might have lost the world, or we might have lost Mercopa. Uh, we won't know until the day when we can enter the facility to evaluate. Uh, Committee for Reforms, which we already sort of went over before. Speaker Gloria Torrey said that a committee which includes all three political parties of the Assembly has been formed for the preparation of potential changes to the Constitution. The committee has been asked to submit a comprehensive report to find a solution for the current problematic state of affairs in the governmental institutions. Tory said USP wants to appeal to the people of Swordland to help in maintaining stability and order in the state. The details of the committee regarding its actual topics or its members have not been clarified. Alfonso abandons Lotharberg exclusive concave. I'm not going to read through every single one of these. I'm mostly going to focus on the ones that are actually important. Uh, this one's about s soccer. Well, football. As they call it, but it's soccer. That's what I call it. Uh, support and assembly grows for campaign finance bill. Okay. Let's see. This would result in an increase of about 28 million Swordish Ren to the governing United Swordland Party, which will benefit the most from the proposed bill. The new bill would give political parties an annual amount of 500,000 Swordish Ren per member of Assembly. Radical. Let's see. Decades after the infamous Azam incident, new unconfirmed information emerges that challenges the official state narrative as per anonymous former Black Battalion sources. The incident was not an act of foreign aggression to destabilize Swordland, but a government conspiracy to gain influence. Okay. Uh, Rumberg coming south. Our, aggress our foreign policy analysts who are reviewing the recent aggressive military and diplomatic developments of Rumberg have come to the conclusion that it is highly likely that Rumberg will try to push further south, threatening the territories of Swordland, Wailin, and possibly Agnolia. The annexation of Dome many decades ago was just the beginning. Rumberg seems to be on a quest to secure all strategic resources in East Mercopa. Rizia firmly refutes Pale's report in Ares Gasfield dispute. Okay, Turkey. Uh, yes. Uh, Dome is up here. Uh, presumably it was not one of ours, although the paper did kind of make it sound like it was one of ours. Presumably it was Agnolia's because I have a hard time believing that our border wrapped around Agnolia like that. I just feel like that'd be weird. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. Uh, report on the HSU fire. Initial report from the chief of police in Hulsard indicates a near to complete destruction of employee records from 1890 until now, along with original copies of internationally recognized academic research destroyed. The extent of the damage is worse than expected. Okay, uh, public opinion report. 
People's views on the need for democratic reform in the government structure has changed over the last decade. Reformers propagandists from the leader of the People's Freedom and Justice Party, Franz Richter, have resulted in a massive increase in the demands for de democratic reforms. It is estimated that currently 55% of the population supports the reformist ideas. Okay, well, that's beneficial for us, potentially. Uh, GNA prepares the Tourism Act. The Grand National Assembly in Hallsword is readying the Swordland Tourism and Cultural Preservation Act. This act aims to enhance the cultural and tourism appeal of several cities, including Bornen, Ribery, Lakhaven, Anrika, and Benif uh, Benfi, in a collective push to make Swordland a global tourist destination. If I recall correctly from reading um, just sort of a guide somewhere that I stumbled upon, uh, it doesn't exactly do what it says. Uh, gas field discovery in Nar, or excuse me, Narbel. I was going to say Nara, but it's not Nara, it's Narbel. <laughs> These discoveries could enhance the city's energy supply and play a significant role in the broader energy landscape of Swordland. Preliminary analysis of the yield and quality of these fields is currently underway. The corporation will soon release a comprehensive report outlining extraction feasibility, the economic implication of these findings, particularly regarding potential growth and job creation in the region, are noteworthy. Increasing homelessness in Darien, or, or excuse me, Deer. Deir? I don't know how it's pronounced. I really don't. <laughs> uh, the numbers of homeless in the city is more likely to have increased by 25% in the last year. The rise was particularly stark among bloodish people, or bloodish? Bloodish? We'll go with bloodish. Uh, people where homelessness increased by 72% in just six years. It is reported that the homelessness among ethnic minorities has reached the highest level in more than a decade. The Bluedish minority of the region now account for up to 47% of all homeless people there. Yeah, the Bluedish are going to be an interesting scenario because we have issues with them. Um... Well, I say we have issues with them. That's not strictly accurate. We'll get into more of that once we start needing to deal with them more. Uh, the National Preservation Foundation in Lirin... Lirin? Lirin. Has organized a march promoting ecological practices. Okay. Wonderful. Good for them. Okay. We have nothing else to look at, it looks like. Let's go ahead and do a media or a meeting on the media strategy. Lucini and Peter arrived in my office to talk about recent development and the media strategy. They both took their seats across from me. Lucien puts on his reading glasses and quickly went over some documents. Peter turned to Lucien and nodded. Greetings, gentlemen. I have just received further information from the interior about the sudden fire that broke out at the Hulsard State University archives nearby. Tell me more. The initial reports from the Hulsard police chief indicate a potential arson case. In accordance with protocol, the Swordish Intelligence Directorate has been called. Is the SID really necessary for this? Why would anyone hit the archives of a university in the first place? I see no logical motive there. It seems like the chief suspects foreign sabotage. They informed us that a large section of the archive has been destroyed. It includes tens of thousands of globally recognized research documents in original by the great thinkers of our people. Hmm. Well, we need to support our education system to make new discoveries for the future. Preserving our knowledge is as important as expanding on it. It's interesting that the employee records have been destroyed as well. Luckily, most originals have copies in the other libraries and some international library, or excuse me, in the other universities and some international libraries. The first edition of my favorite book, The Geopolitics of Swordland by Herman Equa, was destroyed too. Maybe it was just a freak accident. We do have the copies of most important works, so no single fire can eradicate our knowledge. I see no point in destroying employee records either. More importantly, Lucien mentioned that Marcel Coronti contacted him. The Corontis had always been known as one of the richest and most influential families in Swordland. Marcel Coronti was no exception. He was the oldest son of Conrath Coronti, the industrialist and media mogul who founded HOS, the richest, uh, the richest man in the entirety of Swordland. That is the heart of Swordland conglomerate. 
Let's see. Enjoy many benefits such as huge salary bonuses, free private health care, and free housing. Hmm. Free housing. Okay. In the last decade, a leadership question has engulfed the organization, which slowed down its revenue, but it still remains a behemoth that can influence the economy as well as the perception of the society on certain issues. Okay, Lucian turned to me. He has offered to meet with you, Mr. President. What does he want? After the passing of his father, may he rest in peace, Marcel aims to become the, new, the next CEO of the HOS conglomerate. He mentioned a productive collaboration. They are a powerful and influential media conglomerate. To start with, they own the Swordland Today newspaper, the Swordish Broadcasting Company, the S... Which means it would be wise to have them by our side. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. But there has to be a catch. He did not wish to explain the details over the phone, but rather in person. I believe I will be receiving a call from him sometime soon. However, as Peter said, they have substantial power over the content of media outlets, headlines, radio show, or at radio shows. That is what we would be what he would be offering. What he wants in return is what we need to understand. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First we need to determine our general approach to media. I'm no media expert, but Lucian made some very interesting arguments at the preparation meeting yesterday. There are two ways we can approach the media. One of them is by influencing it, which has clear advantages. The other one is keeping it independent. Well, m media must be independent. Ideally, yes, but an unpopular leader will not be able to pass even the easiest reforms. It is of utmost importance to maintain public popularity and avoid any damaging scandals or mistakes. I must stress one thing, Mr. President. The more people we have supporting our agenda, the more we can accomplish. With someone on our side in an influential media organization, we can do this very easily. I see what you're getting at. I agree with Lucian, but why the assumption there'll be scandals and mistakes? We can always hope for the best, but do we really think that nothing can go wrong, especially considering the very recent history of Swordland? Two knocks were heard on the door. Oh, come in. Livia Suno, my new secretary, entered the office. Her dark curls bounced as she crossed the room to my desk. She spoke with a slight lilt in her voice. Excuse me, Mr. President. Mr. Galad's secretary has been calling me and wanting me to relay a message. Marcel Caronti, the new CEO for HOS Conglomerate, is on the line for Mr. Gala Galad. God, I can't get his last name right. Well, the ball is in our court now. Would you like to talk to him, sir, or would you like me to? I'll talk to him. Connect the line to my office. Right away, sir. Connecting the call to line one. Livia left the room and the phone started ringing. I picked it up. It's a pleasure, Mr. Caronti. The pleasure is all mine. I know your time is valuable, so I will not waste any of it. I was just elected CEO of HOS. My strategy in the running of this conglomerate will be different than my father's approach. This is why I am offering a partnership deal regarding our media branch. I would like to formally invite you to my resort near Conriat, for a meeting to discuss the details. What does that entail? Our future as partners, Mr. President. Surely we can't talk about the details on the phone. I just wish to have a face-to-face -face conversation with you. I will send you the details through my secretary if you are interested. Thank you for the offer. I would be interested in meeting. You will not be disappointed, I promise. Well then, I will let you return to your packed schedule. See you later, Mr. President. See you later, Mr. Caronti. I'll set things up right away. Expect a worthwhile meeting next month. It's settled then. Looking forward to next month. I wonder if he has a pool. It appears we're done for today. We will continue where we left off later. Thank you for your time. Uh, good work with Marcel. Keep it up. Lucien and Peter nodded before gathering their documents and leaving my office. We were already getting the attention of key figures, and potentially dangerous ones.
Nope. Situation report. Fluctuating energy prices. Storland is currently grappling with fluctuating energy prices, a development causing uncertainty in the domestic market. This unpredictability may lead to significant repercussions for Swordland's economy uh, and can influence both domestic policy and international trade relations. Okay, what do we have in the news today? Swordland today, Corinth Corinth passed away, suspicious fire. Okay, that's just repeating. Nothing exactly new there. Lock Haven Times, Gassum fire, Hires Freeze Amid Economic Strain. Oh, well, that's not good to hear, necessarily. I'll have to get that fixed. A glamorous inaugural ball, the whole sort elite gathers for a lavish state ball. Yep, we'll be there. Ideological dispute between Galmland and Volgsland intensifies under leadership of Brigid. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Under the leadership of Gomland's second female leader, the ideological dispute between Gomland and Volgsland has intensified. Uh, let's see, Gomland's government has been actively promoting the development and implementation of the Galmish Manifesto, a unique interpretation of Carlos Marcia's communist theory. The country has been pushing this agenda to other CSP countries, ga garnering support and building alliances in an effort to strengthen their position in the region. However, internal factors backed by Vogsland's, by Voglandian socialism and United Kantenen uh, Malianvinism pose a significant challenge to Galsam's government. These factions are working to undermine the Galmish Manifesto and weaken Galmland's influence among its allies. As tensions escalate, both nations find themselves locked in a fierce ideological battle with potentially significant consequences for regional stability and cooperation. The ongoing conflict has recently resulted in the imposition of trade tariffs between the two countries, further straining relations and impacting the regional economy. Economic barriers are likely to exacerbate existing tensions and make it more difficult for the two nations to find common ground on key issues. Observers are closely monitoring the situation, hoping that both nations can find a peaceful and mutually beneficial resolution to the ongoing dispute before it escalates further, potentially impacting the expansion of the CSP alliance. Our regional trade is a question of, in all our heads, what will be the regional international trade policy due to strategic geopolitical location of Swordland. Historically, Agnoli and Whalen have been natural trading partners. Depending on the direction of the Reign administration, we think it is likely that a new trade deal will be brokered with at least one of these partners in the near term. All in all, regardless of which trading partners the administration decides to go with, one thing is for sure, regional trade will boost the ailing economy. The real question is, what does Vogsland or Lesbia think about Swordland? Well, our hope is that Lesbia will like us. Um, and I don't really care too much if Vogsland likes us. Declining energy put at the Volgan Dam. That's not exactly something I want to hear. Uh, SID joins the HSU investigation. We already knew that. Uh, party committee report. The reform committee reports that any potential change to the constitution in the direction of the reformists will likely result in strong opposition from the National Front Party. Okay, so the fascists, that's fine. Uh, the members of assembly in support of such directions seem to be in great numbers and possibly make up a majority in the Grand National Assembly, while most members of the United Swordland Party seem reluctant about supporting such a change as well. And that's uh, something we'll have to change. Tourism potential in Ribery. That's always something good to hear. Oh, we got something off map to take a look at. Let's uh, zoom out. What's this one for? Uh, Kirut expresses approval of Swordish democracy. Uh, I, I guess they're a little bit slow on getting the memo. National map. So that's the campaign finance bill. It has been passed. Okay. So we have our first decision of any real importance here. So the campaign finance bill. Section one of this bill stipulates a significant change in the methodology of public funds allocation to public parties. 
The new measure replaces the previous system based on the number of votes won in the general election with a system reliant on the proportion of seats secured by a political party in the assembly. Section 2 sets the annual financial allocation to political parties at 500,000 ren per each member of assembly. This shift ensures that financial support from public funds aligns more closely with a party's representative influence within the legislative body. Section 3, a consequential effect of these amendments, will effectively lead to a substantial increase in the election budget for the USP and a minor augmentation for other parties present in the Assembly. This restructuring of funding fosters a more proportional representation of party presence within the Assembly. Section 4 highlights an important consequence of this reallocation. Parties that do not meet the 10% election threshold will see their public funding effectively curtailed. This measure ensures that public resources are concentrated towards parties with a significant representation in the assembly. Basically, we can reward ourselves. That is effectively what it means at the end of the day. Now, we have decisions we can make regarding this. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm not, I'm not going to use this to impact my actual um, you know, decision making, but I am going to go ahead and have a guide up just to sort of explain, uh, in a sense, the pro and cons of these options. So this bill, obviously, as mentioned, will favor our party significantly compared to the opposition. So if we sign it, basically our democratic leaning will decrease um, the Malianovists, or the Communists, will also have a loss of opinion towards us. Uh, but the Solists, the guys that followed, uh, what was his... Colonel, I think was his rank? General? Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> I'm forgetting now. It's been like two weeks since I last recorded a part. Um, their opinion of us would increase slightly. Uh, public opinion would also increase, uh, but the British opinion would decrease. Of course, if we veto this, the Solists get upset with us, but the Democratic and British opinion of us will improve. So that is our choice. Uh, however, we potentially... This is an interesting one. So the guide has a bit of an interesting note. Not passing it might not be well received, especially if you then lower the electoral thresholds when drafting the new constitution. Well, we plan to lower the threshold. So it in some ways might actually be worthwhile passing it. Because they would be able to theoretically gain a little bit extra funding. I mean, it still benefits us largely, of course. But nonetheless... Bloodish or Blutish. We're, we're going with Blutish. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Bloodish. It's a U, not an O. The Blutish um, would, in theory, be able to gain some more support in the Assembly. Because, again, the plan is to lower the election threshold from 10%. I don't know off the top of my head what we'll lower it to right now. Um, I think I lowered it to 8% um, before. The idea being, you know, we can sort of do this incrementally was my theory. You know, our administration lowers it to 8%. Um, if we do a good job, the following on assembly that in theory will probably be a fairly similar one to us, we'll maybe lower it further to say 6% or something. And the idea would be that theoretically we would slowly build up to where there is no election threshold. You know, if you win a seat, you win a seat type thing. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, yeah, because if we go into this, go to an overview, is it overview or is it connections? Uh, here we go. Connection. Uh, yeah. Connections legislative. So the independence, I think, effectively just kind of sums up everybody whose party did not make the threshold. Basically is the idea. Um, so the NFP, I think, actually do technically have uh, like actual say here. Um, this doesn't give me the percentages and I'm too lazy to do the math. <laughs> um, but I think they do actually have say, uh, but the, the blue dish don't. 
they're part of this 10%. Theoretically, other people, you know, like the communists also are part of that 10%, but the blue dish are also part of it. And I don't know if they're the majority or not, but nonetheless. So the reality is I'm inclined to say we're going to sign this, even though it has some negatives for us. This is what I did in my test campaign. And again, I, I just think it's probably the better option. While it does benefit us significantly ourselves as our party, I do believe that it potentially has benefits down the road, uh, in theory for future administrations in a sense. So electoral funding reform situation, it is considered, it is considered unfair. It is considered unfair, but we'll survive. We'll survive. Um, election funding reform. The campaign finance bill has been signed into law by President Rain after the approval of the Grand National Assembly by majority vote on Friday following a three-hour debate. Friends Richter, who objected to the funding package, saying it contained too much unfairness in the allocation of the budget, also sought to delay proceedings by demanding a formal recorded vote, but was overruled. The new law brings small changes to the criteria for the allocation of campaign budgets and introduces no changes to the total amount of public funds reserved for the political party, which stands as 100 million Sordish Ren. Um, and of course, you know, Radical says that we are hijacking the elections because we've basically increased our funding, uh, as this implied. We've effectively doubled our funding, but that has it. it, it, it it's for a good cause in the future. Okay. We're going to be making some de decisions that actually this is going to potentially benefit the minority parties down the road. Okay. Second major decision. Invest in mega infrastructure. We have decisions. The Ministry of Economy has put forward two bold plans for mega infrastructure projects that would help with the economic recession in the long term. Investing in projects of this scale will take up some portion of our budget, but could prove worthwhile if accomplished successfully. And this is where we're going to have an interesting situation for us. So, I don't think we actually make the decision on where to do the investment this turn. I think it might be next turn or the turn after where we actually get to make that decision. Um, but I don't, I don't recall. Uh, but nonetheless, there's literally no good reason not to invest. So obviously we'll do the investment. So we've lost a little bit of government budget, but we'll survive. So now to decide what we want to do in this regard. The view towards the Markian Sea from Loch Haven was nothing short of exquisite. The seaside state residence, fiddlingly named the Blue Mansion, was large, fine, and accommodating. But enjoying the luxurious mansion wasn't the main reason for our visit. We gathered the economic team here to discuss the new infrastructure investment project. Okay, I think I remembered wrong. Sorry, one second, I'm looking at something. Uh, half an hour had already passed since the start of the meeting. Unfortunately, I did not have the chance to have my usual afternoon coffee. Looking at the view from the windows, I let my mind drift for a couple of seconds. Simon's voice brought me back into the ongoing discussion. 
Mr. President, we need to focus on boosting the economy as quickly as possible. One of the fastest ways to achieve this is through infrastructure projects. Okay. What can we focus on? On the one hand, businessmen are complaining about the slow logistical rail network between Holsard and Loch Coven. Uh, Layla started talking as soon as Simon took a breath. On the other hand, citizens are criticizing the lack of the of a proper highway connection between Loch Coven and Arvory. The narrow roads by the seaside are not only dangerous, but also difficult to traverse. Hmm. And this is this is where the decision making comes into play. Um not yet, because this is not actually us making the decision yet, but I will go ahead and again, you know, read from the guide just to sort of give an idea as to what's going to happen. So we will be prompted to decide whether or not to build or, you know, upgrade the highway in Angland. So presumably it's this highway right here that goes through Lenkirk and then up into Arvory. Or build a high speed rail network that goes here between Halsard and Lockhaven. Now, per the guide, all things being equal, the train provides a higher boost to economic development, but the highway increases living standards and synergizes with both Agnolian trade and investing in Angland. This is, this is gonna be an interesting thing because if I recall correctly, further down the road, when I did my test game, I chose the high, or the, the uh, high speed rail network. Magnolia wasn't exactly happy about that decision because they think that I'm sort of ignoring their people here who live in Angland, preferring to focus on my people that live down here in Hallsword and, you know, the surrounding regions. Because Angland used to be owned by Agnolia or a predecessor or something from them. So a lot of the people that live here are Agnolian. We took this over, you know, ages, ages past type thing. You know, we've had it for a long time. But there's still, of course, a lot of people here from Agnolia that still live here. So Agnolia kind of doesn't like seeing these guys just kind of be left by the wayside, begging for whatever scraps they can get type thing. So we uh we got some choices here that we'll have down the road. Um I'm this is a case where I'm probably gonna actually diverge from my test campaign because I'm kind of curious as to how it impacts things. Um we're gonna say that the citizens and their demands matter the most. Their demands are just. The dire situation of the road infrastructure between Lockhaven and Arvory can't be neglected. But the return on investment will be low. Our concern should be economic growth. But will the trade that we potentially can get with Agnolia down the road as a result of this decision potentially help to even things out or maybe even result in a bonus? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, it is not business people who are suffering now, but ordinary folk. What really matters is that your first economic act accomplishes something tangible. If only we could do both. I really have a hard time believing that we don't have the ability to do both. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Again, I really wish we could do both. I feel like it's silly that we can't, but then again, if you... I mean, theoretically, you could make it a choice. You know, obviously it sucks up more of your budget if you decide to do both, and maybe you can have a decision where if you choose both, it increases the chance of having a delay occur, and then you need to decide how you want to deal with that delay, but that's besides the point. Moving on. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, we must prove our capabilities. We must improve the economy of the nation. Yeah, we must prove our capabilities. The people must know that this administration can get things done. To that point, I defined two important projects for your attention. The H3 Highway Project and the L1 High Speed Railway Project. Mr. Hull repositioned himself on his chair. The ministry can only support one project at a time with our current capacity and budget. Let's move on to the details of each. So which one do you want to hear about first? Well, let's hear about the H3 Highway Project. The H3 Project aims to improve the abysmal state of the road network in the Angland region bordering Agnolia. The area is home to several million Agno Swordish and Swordish citizens who currently feel neglected. There are no proper highway connections to and from Angland, the, major, uh, the mayor of Arvory, Eric Neal, has been asking for a bigger budget to develop the regional infrastructure. He told us that even trucks are having a hard time traveling through the main roads. The increased traffic is causing trouble for people commuting in and out of the region. I agree. This could also hurt the local businesses. It is, bless their souls. I'm happy we're thinking alike on the matter. Let's take a more detailed look at the upgrade proposal. Yeah, let's look at the map. Lewis uh, was pointing at Lockhaven. Here it is. The H3 Highway route starts here in Lockhaven. And from there it leads to Lenkirk. From there it goes all the way to Arvory. As a result, the road network towards the Agnolian capital stall stallport will also improve substantially. She paused and leaned forward in her chair. As mayor, I saw the central government continuously neglect our country's agno sordish dominated regions. Is this administration going to continue that kind of neg negligence? Really? Let's see. We should no longer neglect a key region for our trade with Agnolia. Sure, but... Most goods flow to Lockhaven and Hullsword, which means we should give more importance to logistics there. It has to be pointed out that the highway would be less beneficial in the short term. In the short term. But what about the long term, Simon? I have to disagree. It will increase the speed of transportation throughout the region. Our citizens will be quite pleased if we successfully accomplish this. Besides, if we enter trade talks with Agnolia, they will see the investment as a positive sign. Very interesting, but I still want to hear about the railway project. Your predecessor, eh, your predecessor Alfonso, failed to deliver on this campaign promise, but now we have the opportunity to start the construction of a groundbreaking railway project. As you know, our current trains cannot meet the standards of today, as many of our many other countries adopt new electric engine technology to power up their trains. We're falling behind. News about the new electric trains in United Continent. United Cantana has piqued our business's interest. They too want to transport resources and materials from Hallsword to Lockhaven with great speed and efficiency. Agreed. The superpowers have led the way with their high quality technology. We've got to keep up. Only technological advancement will give us an edge in the international arena. Our plan is to upgrade the old L1 line from Hallsword to Lockhaven. It will transform into a high speed railway. Gus was pointing at Hallsword while Simon was looking attentively. The planned construction starts right here at the capital. From there, we'll go to Anrika first, and then connect to Gelsword, after which it will reach Lakhaven, our economic powerhouse. The L1 will significantly boost the economies of the newly linked cities and even the rural areas in between. Lakhaven is our primary port, so the goods unloaded there will be transported to Hallsword much faster. Let's see, yes, we should link these rural areas in the middle of in the middle with the major cities of Hallsword. I believe this would benefit Swordish businesses and Swordland as a whole. Yes, we should link these rural areas in the middle with the major cities of Swordland. We are talking about the wealthiest regions and forgetting about Angland, which needs the investment far more. The mayor of Anrika, Curtin Lesty, also requested this project to be prioritized. Of course they did. Businessmen in the region will be very content which in turn will increase investments and employment. Therefore, I will recommend the L1 high-speed rail project. I have settled on a decision. 
Excellent. What will be your final choice, Mr. President? I have decided on the H3 railway or highway project to improve the infrastructure in our poorer regions. And hey, this has some benefits, potentially, if we go to war with Rumsburg in the future. The reason I say that is because better roads do help us get the military around. Granted, having a nice high-speed rail network between Holsort and Lockhaven is also helpful for that, but only for getting to here. It does not help us get anywhere else in the country. So the reality is, I would like to think that our current infrastructure is able to support getting the military, which is probably a lot of it is focused around Hall Sword, out to Lockhaven, and then we just need decent roads to get elsewhere. Let's just completely ignore the fact that yes, this does also support England, and maybe we'll help Agnolia be happier with us further down the road when it comes to trade talks, when those inevitably occur. So yes, we're going to do the H3 highway project. Thank God, I knew that you would see reason. The negotiations will begin in the middle of this year. You will be able to award the contract to a corporation of your choice. The ministry estimates that construction will be completed in two years if every step going forward is executed successfully. Now, thank you all for your contributions and thoughts. See you soon, Mr. Rain. Have a nice day, Mr. President. Evening settled on the beautiful coastline of Lockhaven. Okay, and uh, I got five minutes left on the clock, so I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. I will see you all next time where we will be continuing this. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, we got an opportunity to invest in our Kazian company, uh, which is definitely something that we want to consider. In fact, really, there's no good reason not to. <laughs> We're completely honest. So, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Like I said, there's just no good reason not to realistically at the end of the day. So, yeah, I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.